the importance of a product is in its ability to be able to serve its functions and also for the functions to be clearly defined. A product that is used outside its function will always give problems because it will not be able to perform effectively. Hello, my name is Gaius and it's good to have you here uh, today. I won't be sharing with you uh, things that will help you discover your purpose and walk in it and how to stay in it. A lot of people have found their purposes and um, they have not been able to give a clear way in which they found it, leaving many people asking questions. How do I find my purpose? Why am I here on earth? If you as um, a human being has never asked that question, it means that you have not come to a point where you feel that the world needs you. If you keep taking from everybody and you're never giving back to the system, a time will come the system itself will eject you. I mean, people will not relate with you on the value basis because you are unable to deliver the value that you ought to offer to them. So it's important for you as a human being to know why you are here on earth. There is for every product a manufacturer's guide. The manufacturer's guide tells you uh, the usefulness, the capacity, the limitations, the possibilities. It tells you things that are hidden in a product. Uh, it tells you the instructions, the guidelines to use, where not to use, how to use. You know, drugs always have a label store in a cool, dry place. It means that if it would not perform its duties if you put it in a wet place and it will not perform its duty probably cause more harm than good if it's put in a hot uh, temperature so there is for every one of us a guideline an attached detailed blueprint of what your life should be John 16 verse 13 uh, Jesus said to his disciples says after that he the Holy Spirit how be it when he the Spirit of God is come how be it when he the Spirit of truth rather is come the Spirit of truth is the Spirit of details it means that we have a blueprint in our lives something that God has prepared for us to walk in you know, uh, First Corinthians chapter two verse nine says, "I has not seen, he has not heard, heard, neither has it entered into the mind of any man what the things that God has prepared for them that love Him." You know, and that scripture uh, that Paul quoted was actually from Isaiah sixty-four, verse four. It says, "For since the beginning of creation, for since the beginning of the world, no man has known except God the things that He has prepared for those who wait for Him." So those who wait for God, um, according to Isaiah's writing, uh, was translated as those who love God, according to Paul's um, quoting of that verse. It means that there's a link between loving God and waiting for Him. In other words, um, the, the processes that come, uh, that lead into finding your purpose and finding uh, the reason for which you are here on earth, your capacities, the things you are good at, are all tied to loving and waiting for God. So, um, first off, you may not fulfill, in fact, you cannot fulfill your purpose full-fledged if you are not a lover of God. So the first thing in discovering your purpose as a human being is to have a connective a connect a connection with God an existing relationship a working relationship through the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ the second way to find your purpose or the second step in your journey is to relate with the Holy Spirit John 16 verse 13 albeit when he the spirit of truth is come he will tell you all things that is, he will reveal all details to you. He will let you know why you are here, the blueprints that is hidden in you, the things that God has prepared for you before you even came on the scene. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God spoke to Jeremiah. He says that before you were born, I knew you. Before
before I formed you. I knew you. And that is true because in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, scripture says that, And God formed the man from the dust of the earth. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. It means what was formed was just carcass, mere mud, clay. There was nothing in it. The real man came from the breath of God. So you are a product of the breath of God. You are a product of the inspiration of God. And everything that God, that you needed for life and godliness, according to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, according as divine power has given unto us, all things that pertain to life and unto godliness. It means that before you were formed, the details, the resources, the finances, the the capacities, the the enablement, everything that you needed was hidden inside of you. But you are not permitted to know it by any means except through the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the precious Spirit of details is the one that reveals to you. Look at it. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible tells us that no man knows the things of another man except the Spirit of that man. It says also that nobody knows the things of God except the Spirit of God, which means that the details that God has prepared for you, God kept it in His own Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. Ephesians 1 verse 6 says, According as his good pleasure, it pleased him to compose all things in himself. Look at that. It means that everything that has to do with your life, God proposed it. That is, God hid it in himself. The part of him that keeps it secret is the Holy Spirit. The part of God that holds the secret, the blueprint of creation, is the Holy Spirit. And no relationship with the Holy Spirit is no relationship with your purpose. No relationship with the Holy Spirit is, a, is an indefinite struggle with purpose, with life. You don't find meaning until you have found God. You can't find meaning until you have found God. You can't find meaning until you have found God. So how then do we relate with the Holy Spirit? In the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 2, Paul, uh, John the writer says that these things we have said to you, says a life was manifested and the life we have seen that life manifested in the Son of God. But as phrase in verse 3, he says that the things that we have seen and heard, we tell you, we communicate those things to you so that you can have fellowship with us. That is so that you can join in the fellowship. And he says, indeed, the fellowship that we are having is with the Father and with His Son. The fellowship with the Father is the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. That's the first thing we need to know about Him. In discovering purpose, you must realize that the Spirit of God who tells you your details is a person. He can feel, he can be grieved, he can be offended because he's a person. He has emotions, he can communicate, he can communicate his burdens because the purpose of many people is a burden. Like Moses, imagine a man lives 40 years. And he lives with a burden for his people to be free. That's how purposes. We're going to talk about how purposes has communicated to people. Not only through dreams, not only through visions. Not everybody will know their purpose by means of a vision. Not everybody will know their purpose by hearing God in their left ear or their right ear. Not everybody is going to know their purpose by having a dream, falling in a trance, somebody telling you, reading a book. There are many ways purposes are communicated. God communicates His purpose for bringing many people to the world by various means. And one of them is a burden. Moses grew up for 40 years and he was not comfortable. He had unrest staying in Pharaoh's house even though he had everything he needed. He was not happy staying there. He was not comfortable. Not like he didn't have the pleasure, but he knew he could be more. That's how to know your purpose. You know you can be more. How you know that you were made for a purpose is that you begin to feel, you begin to know that I am made for more. He carried about a burden for 40 years and at the end of 40 years, do not knowing how to go about it, he took a wrong step and he launched him into another 40 years of learning how to need God. The next step 
to finding purpose is to admit your need for God. Admit your need for help. You can do nothing of your own self except the Spirit of God helps you. You can do nothing of your own self except God puts you right. You can start right but you can't finish right. You can begin right but you can't finish well without the Spirit of God. There is no end. There is no beginning without the Spirit of God. He says, I am Alpha and Omega. It means nothing starts without me. Nothing ends without Him. John chapter 1 verse 3. And without Him was not anything made that was made. It means all things start and ends with Him. So, there is a need for you to admit that you need God. And there is a need for you to reach out to God. How do you reach out to God? By the words of your mouth. You need to admit in your heart that you need Him and then you need to make a confession. Spirit of God, I need you. Show me. Show me how to walk. Show me how to talk. Show me what I was made for. Let me begin to see the things that I was made for. I began to uh, discover myself as, 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 a, as, an SS, as an SS2 student at the age of 15. I knew that God had prepared me to teach His people faith prosperity and power not prosperity in terms of money because prosperity is not money in Genesis 39 the Bible says that Joseph was a man in chains a slave having limited freedom or no freedom at all yes scripture calls him a prosperous man so prosperity has not to do with the affluence of wealth on the physical it has to do with the value system that a man can deliver from within your purpose begins from knowing yourself within it begins from finding yourself discovering yourself you are not about to go on a, on a search of something that is not existent you are about to discover something that already 